Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 12.1, Trigonomic Functions in Right Triangles, part two. And in part two, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be covering the inverse functions of all the trig functions of cosine, sine, and tangent. Now, we represent inverse cosine with that little negative one right there, all those trig functions to the negative one. Now you can also represent them with arc cosine, arc sine, and arc tan. It really depends on what book you're using. But for right now, our book is going to use the cosine to the negative one, sine to the negative first, and tan to the negative first. Let's go ahead and jump right into things. When we are asked to find the measure of each angle, round to the nearest tenth if necessary. First things first, again, always go with what you have. So we're starting with this x, this angle. Well, what are we given? We're going to be given what's across from it. And that's going to be the opposite, right? And then what's right next to it? That is going to be the adjacent side. So what trig function gives us opposite and adjacent? That is going to be tangent. So once we get tangent, let's go ahead and set everything up. Well, I go tan because I need that angle of x we do not know, so it's just gonna be x equals opposite, which is nine over adjacent, which is 14.4. Now in order to find our angle, we have to get rid of that tan, yes? So in order to get rid of that tan, I have to take both sides times the inverse of that tangent. So I'm taking that tan to the negative first, and that button on your calculator is second tangent. Again, that is second tangent. I will show you in class if we're still confused. What happens here is something a little magical. This inverse tan undoes this tan, so we get an x here, and then when you punch this into your calculator, tan to the negative first, and then nine divided by 14.1, you get a degree measurement, which is 32 point something and I'm gonna round it to 32 degrees right so I'm rounding it to 32 degrees on to two again start with what you have we are looking for y from y what sides do we have we have the opposite and then we also have the side across from the 90 degree angle making this side the hypotenuse well what trig function deals with the opposite and the hypotenuse that is going to be sine so now we have sine of y, so it's just sine y equals the opposite, which is 14.4. That's going to go over 17. Now I have to undo this sine, and how do you do that? You have to take the inverse trig function. So I have to take sine to the negative first, punch it in your calculator. Same thing here, the inverse of sine. What happens, those signs undo each other, so it's y now equals a degree measure of 58 degrees. A couple vocab words here. We have first the angle of elevation. The angle of elevation is the angle between the horizontal line and the line of sight from the observer to an object at a higher level. So here's our little picture, a little diagram. If here's my little dude, right, my little guy, I, my line of sight is here, but then my angle is from here to there because I'm looking up. So this is the angle of elevation going up. Angle of depression is a little bit different. It is the angle between a horizontal line and the line of sight from the observer to an object at a lower level. So here, my line of sight is this little dude. I'm looking out, yes? Now be very careful with the angle of depression because the angle of depression gives you this angle, gives you this guy right here. But is this the angle in the triangle that we're looking for? No, it is not. We want to find this guy, right? So in order to find this guy, we just have to go 90 minus and then whatever that guy. So we would have to go 90 minus theta to find that and we'll cover it in an example coming up. With three, we're going to apply either the angle of elevation or the angle of depression. 
So let's take a peek. A ramp for unloading a moving truck has an angle of elevation of 32 degrees, so it's angle of elevation. If the top of the ramp is four feet above the ground, estimate the length of the ramp. Well, let's start with a little picture here. I'm gonna say my ramp's gonna go right about there, and we are told that it is four feet above the ground. Now my ramp goes from here all the way down to the ground, right, to make a nice little right triangle. Well, what is my angle here? My angle is 32 degrees. So now I am given from my angle, I am giving opposite and what are we trying to find? We are trying to find the length of the ramp. So the length of the ramp would be right here with my beautiful art skill. So I'm going to let, label that X. And we have this angle here. X is going to be the hypotenuse, right? Because it's across from the 90 degree angle. So what trig function uses opposite and hypotenuse? That is going to be sine. So let's go ahead and use that. We have sine of 32 equals opposite, which is 4 over x. Now we do not need to use inverse sine here. We just hit sine 32 to find out our decimal answer. That is 0.523. That equals 4 over x. Put that over 1 and cross multiply. So it's 0.523 x equals 4 divided by 0.523. And so x equals 7.5 feet. So the length of our ramp is 7.5 feet. Let's try another one with my beautiful artistic ability. Here with four, the hill of a roller coaster has an angle of depression. Now we're using the angle of depression of 70 degrees. Its vertical drop is 195 feet. Estimate the length of the hill. So first things first, let's go ahead and draw a roller coaster. So our roller coaster is going to go up, and then it's going to go down just like that. Keep moving on. So here is the hill. At the height of the hill, we are looking out of it, and it says the angle of depression is 70 degrees. So that 70 degrees is going to go from here to probably about there, and that is the 70 degrees. So I'm going to draw a straight line down like that. So this now is 70 degrees. How far is it to the ground? Well, the vertical drop itself is 195 feet. So from here, the top of the hill, all the way to the bottom of the drop is 195 feet. Now here is our triangle with this right angle, the drop, and this red line here. Do we have this angle? No, we do not. This angle comes from what? We have to go 90 because this is a whole 90 degrees. 90 minus, well, what did I take up already? I already used 70, so I go 90 minus 70 to get 20 degrees. So this angle in here is 20 degrees. We are now asked to find the length of the hill. Now, I didn't draw the best picture, but the hypotenuse kind of matches the hill. Do you agree? This hypotenuse kind of matches the hill. So we are asked to find that x. So what do we have? We have an angle measure, and we have the adjacent. This is going to be the adjacent side. That is adjacent. And then we have x, the hypotenuse. Well, what uses? adjacent and the hypotenuse. That is going to be cosine. So we use cosine of 20 degrees. Cosine of 20, that equals the adjacent, which is 195. That goes over the hypotenuse. Then let's go ahead and punch this in because we have a degree measure. So we do not need to use inverse cosine. It's just punch it right in. So cosine of 20 degrees is point. 9397 that equals 195 over x we cross multiply to find that 0.9397 x x equals 
195, divide by 0.9397, and so we come up with x equaling 207 feet and 6 inches, or 207 and a half feet for the length of our hill. And that does it for the second part of section 12.1, trig functions in right triangles. Good day.